So in this video, we are going to see about the anatomy of pharynx on how to approach this topic for NEET entrance exam preparation. So there are lot of named structures related to pharynx. So it is a very, very important topic. And let's see what pharynx means. Pharynx is a fibromuscular tube that extends from the base of skull to esophagus. Okay, it extends from the base of skull to esophagus. From here, this is the base of skull to the esophagus. At this level, the esophagus begins. And it is related to the following structures. Superiorly, it is related to skull base. Which part of the skull base? The body of sphenoid and the basilar part of the occipital bone. Inferiorly, it is related to esophagus. Posteriorly, it is related to pre-vertebral fascia and then to the vertebral bodies. Anteriorly, it is related to three cavities, the nasal cavity, oral cavity and larynx. Laterally, it is related to styloid process, the neurovascular structures and the muscles of the styloid apparatus. They are the lateral relation. In the uh, pharynx it is divided into three okay the three subdivisions are the first one being the nasopharynx and then comes the oropharynx and laryngopharynx in the nasopharynx lot of mcqs can be asked we'll see what are all the features that are present in the lateral wall of the nasopharynx here this structure here is the opening the pharyngeal end opening of the pharyngeal end of the eustachian tube what is the connection it connects eustachian tube connects the nasopharynx to the middle ear cavity and on top of it you can see tonsil that is the tubal tonsil which causes an elevation okay so the tubal tonsil that is present on the superior and posterior aspect of the eustachian tube opening causes elevation and there are two folds extending from this elevation the sphenopalatine fold and the sphenopharyngeal pharyngeal fold so one extends from the salpingus the word salpingus means tube okay so salpingopharyngeal fold extends from the eustachian tube to the pharynx and the salpingopalatine fold extends from the eustachian tube to the soft palate and then we have towards the roof and the junction where the roof meets the posterior wall this is the junction at that junction we have another tonsil here this tonsil is called as the nasopharyngeal tonsil which is also called as adenoid. Inflammation of nasopharyngeal tonsil is called as adenoiditis, which is more common in children. In the nasopharyngeal tonsil, there is a bursa, which is seen as a in pouching. The bursa is called as nasopharyngeal bursa or lushka, bursa of lushka, L-U-S-C-H-K-A. And so we've covered so far the eustachian tube opening we've also seen about the tubal tonsil and the elevation it creates we saw about the nasopharyngeal tonsil and the bursa that is related to the nasopharyngeal tonsil one more important thing is just above the nasopharyngeal tonsil you'll see a dimple like structure that is because of the persistence of wrath case pouch Okay, this is also can be asked in a MCQ. The dimple is because of persistence of wrath case pouch. And then we have, so I told you that there is the opening of the eustachian tube. Superior and posterior aspect of it is the tubal tonsil causing the elevation. Further superior and posterior to it, there is a recess. The recess is called fossa of Rosenmuller. Okay, pharyngeal recess, it is also called as fossa of Rosenmuller. All these structures are related to the lateral wall of the nasopharynx. Up to C1 level, the nasopharynx extends. The next feature that we are going to see is called as passivance ridge, that is part of the uh, 
palatopharyngeal muscle. Okay, Perseverance ridge is caused by the palatopharyngeal muscle and it is a component of nasopharyngeal isthmus. So, when the food is swallowed, okay, the soft palate will go upwards. The soft palate will go up and hit against the Perseverance ridge and close the nasopharyngeal isthmus. The next structure that we are seeing is the oropharynx. Anteriorly, the oropharynx is related to oropharyngeal isthmus, which is bounded by the soft palate above, dorsum of the tongue, posterior part of the tongue below, palatoglossal fold, okay, on the either side. Here we have a fossa called as tonsillar fossa that is situated between the palatoglossal and the palatopharyngeal fold which consists of the palatine tonsil or the tonsil. The anterior aspect of nasopharynx is related to coanae or the posterior nasal aperture. So, this is the anterior aspect of nasopharynx and this is the anterior aspect of oropharynx with the oropharyngeal isthmus. Then we will see about the laryngopharynx which is related anteriorly to inlet of larynx okay what are the boundaries of inlet of larynx it is formed by epiglottis the upper border of epiglottis airy epiglottic fold and interarytenoid uh, membrane this bounds the laryngeal inlet so again when the food is swallowed the epiglottis will fold and close the laryngeal inlet it will fold and close the laryngeal inlet so that the food enters the esophagus. There is an important fossa related to pharynx called as the pyriform fossa. You have to know the boundaries of this fossa. Medially, it is related to airy epiglottic fold as well as quadrangular membrane which is part of the larynx. Laterally, it is related to thyroid cartilage here and above that, it is related to a membrane called as thyrohyoid membrane. Okay, thyroid cartilage and thyrohyoid membrane is present laterally. Airy epiglottic fold and quadrangular membrane is present medially. Superior to it, we have a, a depression called as valicular. And what is the structure that separates the pyriform fossa from valicular? It is the lateral glossoepiglottic fold. It is the lateral glossoepiglottic fold. The laryngopharynx lies opposite to the vert cervical vertebra C4, 5 and 6. So, the oropharynx will lie opposite to the cervical vertebra 2 and 3. Craniopharyngioma is a ca uh, cancer that occurs in the nasopharynx. And then we will see about the muscles of the, uh, the pharynx. It is arranged in this manner. The innermost layer is the mucosa followed by that we have the pharyngobacillar fascia and then following that we have the constrictors superior middle and inferior constrictor as well as the longitudinal muscles outermost layer is called as the buccopharyngeal fascia so what are all the constrictors this here is the superior constrictor that is attached to the pterygoid hamulus the raphe pterygoid hamulus, raphe as well as part of the upper part of the myeloid line in the mandible. The next constrictor here is the middle constrictor that is attached to the stylohyoid ligament, the lesser horn and the adjacent part of the greater horn of hyoid. The third constrictor consists of two components, thyropharyngeus and cricopharyngeus. Thyropharyngeus attaches to the uh, thyroid cartilage and the cricopharyngeus attaches to the cricoid cartilage. The gap between thyroid cartilage and cricoid cartilage can occur in some people. It is the weak part and the gap is called as Killian's dehiscence. The gap between the Two components of inferior constrictor is called as Killian's dehiscence and a diverticulum mucosal outpouching through this gap junction weak point is called as Zenker's diverticulum. So that is about the Zenker's diverticulum. Now let's see what are all the structures that passes through the 
gap between the base of skull and superior constrictor. What are all the structures? The first one is the auditory tube. Then followed by that is the lateral uh, levator palati muscle. Okay, this is the levator palati muscle. And then we have the ascending pharyngeal artery. So, there are three structures passing in the gap between the base of skull and the upper border of the superior constrictor. What are all the structures passing between the superior and the middle constrictor? It is stylopharyngeus muscle and the nerve supply. Its nerve supply is glossopharyngeal nerve. Both of this will pass between the lower border of superior constrictor and upper border of the middle constrictor. The next one that we will be seeing are the structures present between the middle constrictor and the inferior constrictor. They are internal laryngeal nerve and superior laryngeal vessels. These are the same structures that pierces the thyrohyoid membrane. The last information about this gap is what are all the structures present below the inferior constrictor? Recurrent laryngeal nerve and internal laryngeal vessels. So, we have to know about the origin insertion of the constrictors. Insertion, all of the constrictors will insert into the uh, pharyngeal raphe in the midline. Okay, that extends from the tubercle here, pharyngeal tubercle in occipital bone. And we should also know about what are all the structures passing in the gap. All of these structures are important for MCQ. And then we will see about what are all the longitudinal muscle. The muscle that are at, attaches from soft palate is palatopharyngeus. The next one is salpingopharyngeus that attaches from the eustachian tube or auditory tube till the uh, pharynx. The last longitudinal muscle is stylopharyngeus that attaches from the styloid process. All these three will attach to the posterior border of the lamina of thyroid cartilage. So, this is about the uh, muscles, the circular or the constrictors and the longitudinal muscles. Arterial supply is by ascending pharyngeal, ascending palatine, tonsillar artery, greater palatine and pharyngeal branches from the maxillary artery. These two are from the facial artery as well as lingual artery and the venous drainage is into the venous pharyngeal venous plexus. It is uh, lymphatic drainage into the lower deep cervical group of lymph nodes. So, we have seen about the important information related to pharynx. Thank you.